What is up YouTubers and viewers, this is the ATM Bobber Trail and I'm going to be filming a different kind of video today. This video is not going to be all about trains, it's going to be about so many other things I collect. It's mainly focused on the background in my uh, YouTube channel where if you go on my channel and you're not going to see the bobber where I'm holding in my hand, you're going to be seeing the background and you're going to see all the toys I have in the background. I'm going to be explaining every single one of them. And I'm going to be giving you a couple brief details about all of them too. But either way, let's start off. One of the first things is the Bobber, the, the, the Union wait, Southern Pacific Bobber. This is the one I had on the channel, but I switched it out uh, to this one is because the Union Pacific is actually one of my favorite railroads. A little bit lesser than the Southern Pacific, but I like any kind of railroads, but I have to give it more to Union Pacific. But let's, mo uh, let's move on to the toys. One of the first toys that you see in the background is a 1968 Hot Wheels case. This is one of only a few models that are actually released during that year. One of them was a 1967 Evan Redline case, but this is another year. This was 1968. It has the white line. But underneath here it has the ages 3 and up. If you look closely here, it says 1968. Somewhere right there. And on the inside, I do have a lot of Hot Wheels in here, but most of these are rare. If I open up in 3, 2, 1. Most of these Hot Wheels I collected in certain stores, but the rarest one is in here. I'm going to be giving a brief detail on all of these in a different kind of video, but I just wanted to briefly show you all the Hot Wheels in here. But I'll show you the rarest, the rarest one in here. I bought this Hot Wheel. It was in a, in a uh, antique toy store. And I paid a little bit less than its original value. It's known as the uh, Six Shooter Hot Wheels. This is a rare Hot Wheels is because this is the first year edition. This Hot Wheels was released in 1970 and there's only four different colors to choose from. This is one of them. The other one was a blue, a yellow mustard color, and a red. But this is like a teal color. If It's, it's like hard to see if it's like a mixture like a teal and a blue. but. In, current, in this case, it's actually a teal green color. And it's really cool. It's also in really good shape too. I'll let you see underneath. And there it is. And there's the Hot Wheels right here. And also one of the fact, this is also one of a couple Hot Wheels that have six wheels. The other one is a much more rare, uh, known as an open fire, but I don't have that one in my collection right now, but I'm gonna put this back in here and I'll expand some of the other toys as we go on. One of the other toys that was featured, it was on top of a few things, was, was a Tyco RC car. This is the one where it does all the stunts. It's known as the Tyco RC, uh, RC Revolver. And here's the controller for it. I'm going to turn on and I'm going to show it moving. But since I'm on that table right now, I got to be careful I don't drive it off. But here's a couple movements of it. But if I wish I would uh, do it spinning on the table, it's going to be like nearly impossible because I don't want it to have it fall. It's got the steering on it. It's a really cool toy in my opinion. And this is also one of a few toys I have that only run on the type of controller right here. Is because a few of them I have, they don't have the controller, but this one does. It's really cool too. Moving on to our next toy, and this toy is from an antique store, my daddy found it, but it's a 1939 Walt Disney uh, Pluto uh, toy. It's a, it's a metal toy, but the only thing that's not original on it is the tail and the ears. These are made out of double-sided, the, the black tape, and I use these to replicate the ears. And here's the bottom, and it's a wind-up toy, and it says Walt, 1939 Walt Disney. It's made by Marks, and when you wind it up, this way, it goes. But the other thing is, there was another toy made like this too, where another one where it rolled over, just like this, but I don't have that model though. I just got the uh, regular, regular style clue, but this is a really cool toy. And it's also given the name, the Sniffing Clues, this clue though. Since the nose is all the way down, you stick it for clues. Let me run to show you again. 
it doesn't go as fast, but when it goes at that speed, it really goes fast. And there you have it. The other, that's why I have my channel in the background is, uh, the way, this is a Tyco one. It's a Montula trolley, it's a street cars. This is in the background. And I didn't have any trolleys in there, it's because I had standing up like uh, this, but on the inside of here, I have a couple of trolleys to show you. I have three original trolleys, but this is the one that belongs to the packaging. I showed this in the last video, this is a 19, 53 this is an older one but it doesn't have the details just because it was never been detailed but the original one is supposed to have them on two over here but it's left on uh, painted the same one goes for this one but this one's slightly newer than this one just a couple years apart it's a it's entirely red it also has the exact same power here with the non-power wheel over here and the power wheel over here but the final one this one's from 1958 it's a, it came along with a couple of sets like the Pennsylvania Mammoth of the Rail set and the Shifter set, but this is the one that has the stripe designs, but it has no uh, lettering here, which looks a little similar to the Coney Island uh, and paid scheme, but it also has the similar motor too. And either way, here's the paper inside there. Here's the box. I hope it has a few rips in this because we bought this in the train show like a couple uh, months ago, and it was like a really cool find. And here it is. And one of the other toys that were actually featured, but this is not actually a toy. It's a Coke bottle. But what makes this Coke bottle unique is on the top right here, it says on and off. And when you turn this on and off, watch out for bright light. It's a light bulb. It's a flashlight. This is probably one of the coolest flashlights that I have you know, in my Coke bottle collection. But this is, I don't have any, I don't collect a lot of flashlights, but this is one of my favorite kind of flashlights, the Coke bottle flashlight, and here it is again. And it's just like a turn, it's like you're opening a can, but you have to be careful when you open this because you don't want to break not only this part right here with the electric, but the one with the switch on the top here, so you turn it again. So it's off. It's on, and it's off. It's really cool. And one of the other really fascinating toys I have in my collection is, uh, is a neat, I don't know the exact year for this, but it's an original Gilbert Technic Lab, Chemistry Lab, uh, but this time it's for girls. And these retail for a really high price is because these are extremely valuable is because Gilbert, one more, Gilbert made these toys for boys, but they decided to turn around. Uh, and then I'll do a little experiment, but this time a Technic Lab for Girls. And it says right here. And also everything was actually in here except for a couple pieces were missing, but I'll open this up and, and I'll let you show. Some of the things are missing in here, but here's the microscope. And here's a couple of the dangerous tubes. Because these these toys are infamous for their dangerous uh, substances like this, this, company, this sentence right here, which I have pronounced so troubling the name, but there's a couple other things in here, like a, a fly is in here. here. And some of these are also not open, but I have to be very careful. is because because these stuff that Gilbert sold were not safe. And I have to be extremely careful, but some of these were not open for a very long time. But here's the thing. And here's a couple other stuff right here too, like the Microsoft like the microscope lab, the chemistry lab for girls, and a couple other appliances in there, but either way, this toy is actually really, really cool, and I need to find the boys' version of this, as it was like a really, really common, but the girls' chemistry set, in my opinion, is probably one of the rarer ones, unlike with the original chemical chemistry set, it contains much more chemicals in it, but for this one right here, this one, I would actually say it's a hands down, probably one of the rarest uh, chemistry sets out there. And I was able to lucky to find it in like a store, a Goodwill store. And here it is again. And one of the other dangerous toys that I featured, but it's not in the photo, it's actually on the bottom. It's a 1960 cannon. This cannon back in the time was really cool. It's like a firing cannon. 
and he has the plug and it has the ammo charge right here where if you if you sprung this there's a spark right here and it could take the spark which uh, ignites the gas that's in here so currently in here is like a calcium carbide mixture you put that in here and you scoop it in you put it in there with a water beam on the bottom and when you sprung this as the, the the gases that build up when it touches the water causes a spark which i'll show you over here right there it's like a really bright flash okay you put that in there you open you pull the trigger in here and you fire yeah, but I'm not going to fill it up here because I said last time this is a very dangerous toy and if I fire this I'm going to set something on the fire but this is considered a really dangerous uh, toy unlike with the chemistry lab which I showed which contains all those chemicals but this is like a proposed to like a similar like real firearm um, but this time uh, with actually no bullets it can actually fire but I don't know if it can shoot anything but the only thing is it could shoot out like realistic flames a similar representing like a cannon like this but with the original uh Stuff it used to have is a bang site. It's like a bang site powder where you put put this into here, you scoop it up in there, you load it, and you open fire. It just like resembles, I'm assuming like a little battle. And one of the other open box open box toys I have in the background was this one, but I have to get it get it in soon in a second. This is a very hard, this is actually a common toy though, but finding it like in the box or something and open. Is, is this 19, it's like a 40 or 30s uh, Marks Auto Engineer where you talk into it and the train moves, but here it is in the original box, but it actually has been opened a few times and here's all the things that comes with it, like the manual, the, the power supply, the light bulbs, switch and here's the speaker where you tuck into it and it's really really cool but i would say this is between somewhere between the 30s 30s or very late 40s but i don't know the exact date for it so this is the, the toy right here and i haven't tested this out but i'm going to do a future video of me me trying to do this on this time on like lionel uh, trains i'm going to take a view of the box around but this is a really cool. And one of the other motor toys I have is like a ripcord toy. Uh, in the background, uh, you would see this like standing up uh, like this. I was leaning against one of the other toys, but but this one is like a motorcycle. It's from a uh, Road Rippers, which is like a really, really cool company. And it's like similar to those pull triggers where you run it and the wheel spins really fast. But here it is. It's like really, really cool, and uh, they do still make these, but it does sound a little bit like different. They use it for like the spinning dash ones where it spins and it crashes into each other. But I'll let you show. I'll show you this too one more time before we move on to the next one. I have to be very careful with this toy too, is because they don't make, make these kind of designs anymore. They only do it with the other things. But I can do it one more time. Pull the trigger. I was in the way for that one, but let's move on. And now moving on for the finals. Uh, one of the other things was like a box, but in here, this is a 1961 uh, Antico US Navy Hopper in the box. This car is actually extremely rare, is because this car was only made for one year, 1961. But I have no clue why they just like discontinued this design right here, the US Navy, but it looks really cool. It looks like similar to like a a war kind of color is like a metal color, but unlike the Virginian car or the uh, Redding car, which has similar colors, but this is like a darker gray and it's like really cool. And it's actually in the background where it's like a staying up right on top of the other ions. But I'll take you a little tour on the box. And here's the other side and here's all the trains uh, that was featured back in time, the general 1860 series. And some of the other trains you can find here too. 
And one of the final items, um, but not actually the final, is a couple more. And the background is also a couple of Tyco slot cars. I actually do collect a lot of these, but these are some of the recent ones I got like a few weeks ago. And these are like really cool, but I need to set up like a layout so I can actually present these. But I'm going to be doing some feature videos of them running, but here's the Lambos, which are featuring in like a few sets. Like one of them is like the and uh, the double uh, the double loop set, which I forgot the name of. But here's uh, two of the Lambos that come with it. But there's two more in different other colors. But here's some of the other ones like red, red and neon green. But there's other two. There's like a sandy yellow and like a regular yellow. But here's the two cars. And one of the other final things I'll be showing you is this 1959 Tyco uh, Tyco set. It's in the box, but it has not. It doesn't have the controller because this is like the smaller set where you order the controller separately with the set. But inside here is a Baltimore and Ohio set. All it's all original, but it has been used a couple times. I'm going to bring this closer to you. There's the F F7, the Baltimore and Ohio, and this is the one that has the gear exposed gear underneath. And it has the Manu, my control, the Missouri Kansas Texas box car, the TNSF flat car, and the Baltimore Ohio Bob Recluse with the track and the side girders for the for the uh, flat car. But with this set right here, this set's actually really cool. And this set has also been given the name um, the Coast to Coast set. But there is a couple of marks right here indicating that someone has been playing Mark. It's in here showing, showing some little prices, but back in the time, these were very, uh, like, a little expensive, but now they're currently very hard to find, but we'll be closing this, but I'll let you view this up one more time. Here's all the cars, and here's the engine, but I'm going to close this. And that's all I have uh, for now. Here's, here's the set. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope you got a little bit more information about what was the background and all the other toys I collect. And a couple notes, I am a, I really like collecting like really old toys and, uh, and finding ones that have true value. But uh, with, well, with the other recent videos I'm going to be posting soon, there are going to be more other train videos, but I'm going to be posting this one for the background, background in the video only. But... Either way, thank you for watching this video, and I hopefully you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, have a good rest of your day.